What's up guys and welcome back to Moan Inc. If you guys are new here, then what's up? My name's Erica. Hey ya! How you doing? For today's video, as you can see from the title, we're going to be discussing romance books that are retelling Greek mythology or are inspired by Greek mythology. Now, for you guys who don't know me, I am a classicist. I have a degree in classics from NYU and I have channeled all of this knowledge that I have learned into creating this channel, which is centered around telling you guys about the ancient Greek and Roman world. Now, I say centered around at the moment because I do plan on expanding next year, really, into other ancient cultures, bringing on experts to talk about those sorts of things. But something that I love doing is engaging with the world of today to see how the myths, the histories, the stories from the ancient world have been modernized and then pushed out to a modern audience. And so obviously one of the ways that I do that is by reading books. I read lots and lots of books and romance seems to be a genre that has really taken the Greek myths in recent years and ran with them. So today we're just gonna be going through the stack of romance books that I have on the floor sitting next to me. I'll be telling you guys the stories or the mythologies that have inspired these books, but I will not be telling you my personal opinions because I have reviewed all of these in separate videos. So I will be linking all of those videos in the description below. And really you guys can just decide on what I tell you, you know, about the book, if you guys wanna buy them or not. And then, Obviously, if you guys want to know what I, as a classicist, think, then you guys can check out those reviews if you would so like. But that was a super long intro, so don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so that you guys know every single time I post in the future. And now, let's just get into the books. So book number one, we've got to start with a big one. We have to start with, I think, one of the most popular mythology retellings in this genre, and that is A Touch of Darkness. Now, I do want to highlight that with A Touch of Darkness, I am also talking about the rest of the series because currently, I think when this video comes out, book six will be out, uh, but there have been five books in this series that have already come out. Three from Persephone's point of view, two from Hades's, and the third one I think has either just come out or at the time of this video is about to come out. So that's what this signifies. It doesn't just signify the one book, it signifies the series. The series is retelling, reimagining really, the myth of Hades and Persephone, but is doing it in a really new and fresh way. So Scarlet St. Clair has totally, totally taken the ancient world and ran with it, really modernized it in ways that she can. She's taken myths to inspire different elements of the story, whilst also creating a new story, if that makes sense. So it's it's very Percy Jackson-esque, I would say, but in a romance genre. So it's a new world, really heavily inspired, using a lot of the ancient characters in their ancient ways within this new formulation of the Hades and Persephone myth. Book number two is also a reimagining of Hades and Persephone, and that is Neon Gods by Katie Robert. Now, this one, unlike Scarlet St. Clair, is not really inspired by the ancient myth. That's why I want to say reimagining because there's not much of the ancient myth that's in there, nor of any of the other characters that are included in this book. It is just pretty much using the names of the ancient characters and then telling a totally different wacky story <laughs> set in a totally different wacky world. So Neon Gods is Hades and Persephone, but it is also part of a series and I'll be going into the rest of the books because all of these books are set, they're like standalone books, set in the same world with different myths. So Hades and Persephone, but book two of this series is Electric Idol. Now Electric Idol is reimagining the story of Eros and Psyche. It is a little bit more playing into the mythology than Neon Gods did because Aphrodite actively plays a role in this story. Uh, but aside from that, again, it's totally reimagining, totally new world, totally new characters. It is a more so, like fake dating, like fake romance kind of romance book. So if you like that trope, you'll probably like this book. Book number three in the KT Robert Dark Olympus series, which is what this series is called, is Wicked Beauty. This one is so much more going into and leaning into this idea of just taking the names of the ancient characters and spinning a whole new story with them. 
Uh, I didn't find any real mythology in here, but it does use Achilles, Patroclus and Helen within this book. So just bear that in mind, that it's not really a retelling of the Trojan War or of either of those, any even, of those characters' stories. Uh, the world is really sort of established through the previous two books and this book really leans into, I kind of want to tell this story, I want this trope to be in it, which is kind of a love triangle, but not really a love triangle kind of story. You'll see what I mean if you've read the book. And if you want to know what my thoughts are about this book, I brought on my classicist friend Izzy, who also has a degree in classics, uh, and we discussed this at length. So that video is linked below if you guys want to see what we think. But that is book three in the Dark Olympus series, is Helen, Achilles, and Patroclus. And finally, book four in this series is Radiant Sin, which is a reimagining, again, of Cassandra and Apollo, except this Cassandra and Apollo is really like a romance in like a workplace kind of story. I personally find this a little bit iffy, but uh, this has proven to be quite popular over on TikTok, but it is using Apollo and Cassandra. It's kind of halfway between, I would say, Electric Idol and Wicked Beauty, where the story has kind of, it has like a total mind of its own, but there are little elements, particularly of Cassandra's ancient character that are kind of thrown into the story. So it's a little bit more than Wicked Beauty. It's not as close, even though you can't really say that any of these books are close to the mythology, but it's not as aligned as Eros and Psyche was in Electric Idol, obviously. But yeah, so it sits somewhere in the middle and that is the last of the Dark Olympus romance series books. For the moment, anyways, I should probably note here, as I'm sure many of you guys will know, that Katie Robert has planned for this series to be a total of 10 books. So as those books come out, I will continue to review them on the channel individually, talk about them, talk about the mythology, the new storyline, the new characters, all of that sort of stuff. Uh, so you guys are going to want to subscribe to see those. And when all the books come out, I will do a roundup video as well, because I think that that's also necessary. But yeah, so that is the four books that are already out of the Dark Olympus series, and the rest of these book reviews will be coming out later. The next book is one that really did fly under the radar. It is a book that I only knew existed because a friend of mine told me it existed, quite honestly. And that is The Promise of Lightning by Jenna Weatherwax. I do just want to point out how stunning this cover is. Every time I hold it up to the camera, I'm like, God, that's a pretty book. And this book is really interesting because it's not a myth retelling, but actually Jenna Weatherwax takes this idea that I'm sure you guys will be familiar with, uh, this ancient Greek myth, which actually comes down to us through Plato's Symposium, uh, that is that once upon a time, humans, you know, they had four arms, four legs, two heads, and Zeus, who is the ancient god, like the ancient king of the gods, the ancient god of the sky, he deemed humans too much of a threat, and so he split them all in half. And the idea of us, you know, getting married and falling in love and finding our soulmates is that we're trying to find the other half. So the person that originally we would have been connected to, but Zeus split us in half, right? So that is that story, the ancient story that I'm sure you're familiar with. And that's the story that Promise of Lightning runs with, except what happens in this book is that something goes wrong in this new world where they have this system where you can sort of match people up to their soulmates uh, and figure out who they were once connected to and all of this. Something goes wrong and the main character is assigned two soulmates. So it's a romance book that centers around the, the conundrum of like, now what, basically, is how I would describe this, uh, this book. The next romance book is also one that flew under the radar. It is one that I will in real time be reviewing tomorrow with, uh, with a friend of mine, but it is called A Gorgon's Price. Now, this book is not retelling any mythology. It is kind of using a bunch of different mythologies, I'll be honest. It uses not only Greek mythology, so as you can see with Gorgon's Price and the person on the front of the book, that this is taking the Gorgons, so taking the sisters of Medusa, specifically Uriali, um, as the main character of the book. But there's Irish mythology woven into this book. There is Albanian mythology thrown into this book. Lots of different uh, world cultures mythologies that are thrown into this book to tell the story of Uriali and this guy who is the son of some Irish mythological character. <laughs> I don't know Irish mythology or Celtic mythology like at all, but he is descended from one of them and the two of them have to go and basically crack this case. They're kind of like these fun 
policemen. <laughs> that was a really bad way of describing this book. This is just the first of a series. Even though it is deceptively thin, it is incredibly raunchy, incredibly quickly. And my personal views of this book are not the best. So you guys can watch that book review if you guys want to know why and why I think this book probably should stay under the radar, in my opinion, which sounds horrible, but you guys can check that out in the description below. But yeah, for a raunchy sort of reimagining of world mythologies coming together to make this odd world, uh, that would be Gorgon's Price. Okay, so for the last five books, because we do have five more books left to go for these romance books, uh, they are all part of the same series, sort of like the Katie Robert books are that I have just done. In the same way, this series is not finished, but they are also all standalone books within the same series. And that is the Monsters and Muses series by Sav R. Miller. Now these are all reimaginings of Greek mythology. And the first one is Promises and Pomegranates, which is a mafia romance book about Hades and Persephone. So different names for the characters, just so you guys know. This is not set in the ancient world. This is a modern book about mafia families, but takes the myth of Hades and Persephone and really, really runs with it. Book two in this series is Vipers and Virtuosos, which again is still set in the same world, still set with the same mafia families, but is using the myth of Orpheus and Eurydice to tell an incredibly twisted tale. And just so you guys know, I have done all of these books individually. I've reviewed all of them individually on the channel. And in the same light with the Katie Robert books, I will be doing them all as a as sort of like one. As soon as the series ends, I will do a giant video talking about each and every one of them, comparing, contrasting, whatever. But book two, Orpheus and Eurydice. The third book in this series is supposedly retelling the myth of Helen of Troy, and that is Oaths and Omissions. So as you guys can probably tell from that comment. <laughs> My personal opinions were not the best of this book, but it is again set in a mafia romance world, except the idea of the main character of this book is stuck between the guy that her dad wants her to marry and the guy that she wants to marry, who's obviously a hitman because it's mafia romance. Welcome to the genre. The penultimate book that we're gonna be highlighting is Arrows and Apologies, which is using the myth of Apollo and Daphne as a backdrop to this mafia romance book. This is another one, I didn't really see it, but anywho, you guys can see all of my thoughts down below for why Apollo and Daphne were really at the forefront of this book. And it was really just a mafia romance book, uh, totally unrelated to the mythology, but that supposedly is the myth that's used in order to guide this story through. And the last book in this series and in this video is Souls and Sorrows by Savar Miller, which is a mafia romance book that retells, reimagines the story of Eros and Psyche. It's one that really surprised me. And so that's what this one is. It's about these two characters. Uh, one, the male character who really wants to protect the female character that he sees from afar, he doesn't know her, wants to really protect her and so uh, agrees to marry her right up off the bat. She doesn't really have a say in it. And it's sort of about the way that they adjust to that in this mafia romance world. So those are all of the romance books that I have on my shelf that are inspired by Greek mythology that either retell or reimagine a myth uh, that we're all familiar with from the ancient source material. I do just want to put a note in here that because they are romance books, please, I am not condoning anybody under the age of 18 to be reading these books. And I'm letting that be known now that if you guys are under 18, I would not advise that you read these books. They're incredibly raunchy. And in the case of the mafia romance books, they're incredibly dark as well. So obviously I can't make you do anything, but I am letting everybody know now, or if you wanted to buy these books as a gift for somebody, not under 18. And just as a last point, I always just wanna make this as clear as possible, that as a classicist, if you guys watch my individual book reviews of these books, I am not gonna be hating on them because they are romance books at all because in my opinion, I think that anybody who reads, regardless of what genre that is, that's a positive thing. And that should be encouraged, and that should be rewarded. Like lots of people don't sit down and read books. And if you happen to read romance and that's the only way you're gonna access the Greek mythology, I still think that's a very, very positive thing. So just bear that in mind that when you guys watch those reviews, it's not me bagging on the genre or bagging on people who read that. Cause as you guys can see, I have read loads of them and I will continue to read in this genre to see what that genre is doing with the mythology. But 
I do get quite critical about how that mythology is used because I don't want anybody to read these books and necessarily think that this is the myth. Like, I always think it's important to highlight that even though, yeah, this is a story in its own right, it is a story in its own right. And it is still this reimagining from the author of the Greek myth and not necessarily reminiscent of the ancient source material itself. And if you guys read these books and are inspired to go and read the ancient Greek source material, then that is the most important thing. That would be a win in my opinion. And so I did, I, I did just wanna make that very clear to you guys. So you guys know where I stand. You guys know what to expect kind of from those videos. But yeah, that's the end of this video. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope that you guys uh, have a whole new list of books to read or at least some new books that you can add to your TBR and you guys can join us over on the channel to discuss those in the future. So thank you guys so much for watching this video and we'll be seeing you next time with more videos here on Moan Inc. So I'll see you guys then. Bye.